Today marks the 60th anniversary of the introduction of Australian citizenship. It was on this day in 1949 that the Nationality and Citizenship Act was enacted. Prior to that date, most Australians were British subjects, and uh, many, in fact, indeed remain that way today. Citizenship is, I guess it's a double-edged thing. This, it's a right, it's a responsibility, it's a great honour. I think proudly, I know we all do, of our Australian citizenship and we think very fondly upon those who we accept into the country as citizens and we also hold it with enormous esteem and we want it respected accordingly. So it's a hot topic, the issue of citizenship and immigration. Today there will be ceremonies around the country to celebrate all of this. I just hope in all the celebrations we don't lose context of the fact that there are still some enormous challenges when it comes to who gets this and who doesn't, who is deserving of it, who we invite into this country, who arrives here by their own means. And it often comes down to the language, this sort of constant assertion that everyone who arrives in Australia, be it by boat or be it by any means, not through the appropriate channel, is an asylum seeker as opposed to an illegal arrival. And even yesterday in the Parliament, this continues to burn along. This is a topic that people are talking about everywhere. And whilst they won't talk about citizenship necessarily, they talk about those who arrive here at the country seeking citizenship. The latest boat arrival carrying 58 people, four crew, discovered off the Western Australian coast yesterday. The fourth intercepted in a little over a week. You're getting this? Fourth in a week. And the Western Australian Premier Colin Barnett Use the latest arrival to question Labor's border protection policies. We'll do a bit of that ourselves this morning. So we invite today the Minister for Citizenship, Chris Evans, Senator Evans, on the program to talk about this. Um, Citizenship is an important thing that is very significant to us and hence why people get their backs up when they think it is being challenged. The Minister is on the phone. Good morning to you. Thanks for your time. No worries, Jase. A a significant day, 60th anniversary. It's sort of strange, isn't it? When we think of ourselves... Even, um, you know, with the bicentenary that passed in 88 and then the uh, celebration of the centenary of Federation and Australian citizenship really only kicked in 60 years ago. Yes, well, I think up until then we thought of ourselves as British, you know, despite uh, despite uh, Gallipoli and everything else. This was the turning point where people said, no, no, we are an independent country. We ought to think of ourselves in that way and we ought to think of ourselves as citizens of Australia, not not citizens of the UK. I don't think anyone would say we, we handed out willy-nilly, although sometimes there's an impression that uh, it's, it's a bit too easy to become a citizen of this country for all the privileges that come with it. Uh, we give it out. Do we take it back ever? Uh, we do under, uh, under very exceptional circumstances, but once one's a citizen, you're, you know, you're entitled to full rights. I think you make a good point, though, and one of the things we're trying to emphasise today is it's about rights and responsibilities. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a contract, if you like, that you make to become part of Australia. Part of that is to uphold our laws and, uh, uh, and uh, vote and do all those things about responsibilities, but also uh, it gives you tremendous opportunities. Yesterday we did a broadcast from the Flemington Markets in Sydney and uh, you, you may be aware of it and its background. It's a very heavy Italian community there. And I was sitting around with a lot of blokes that were first and second generation that were there and they just speak so fondly of this wonderful country and they don't ever think of, of Italy as being home or, or whatever. They are Italian by heritage, but that's about it. They love all the country offers. And the thing that really struck me there is it's the issue of assimilation. Italians, the Greeks and other nationalities have come to this country and decided, and, and so, I mean, with respect to you, those of British background, come to this country and decide, I'm an Australian, that's me. Assimilation seems to nowadays be a dirty word we don't ever want to talk about. It's like it's an insult to say to someone they should assimilate. Yeah, look, uh, some of these words have become loaded over the years, Jason. I don't get too hung up on the words. The, the reality is we've had four million people take out citizenship, people who weren't born here who want to become Australians and have become Australians. And some of the you know, the great Australians have been people who uh, who came here after the war, uh, the Jewish uh, people, Italians, Greeks, uh, Europeans, as you say, and then we had uh, uh, people from Vietnam, etc. If you go anywhere in the world, uh, we get a bit negative about this sometimes in Australia, but you go anywhere else in the world and they all tell you they'd rather, they, they think we do it better than any, any other country in the world. We've actually integrated people, brought people in and had them settle successfully better than anywhere else in the world. So while we sometimes focus on the negatives, we've had 4 million people become citizens and had greater social cohesion, if you like, than almost anywhere else. 
Well, we, we can say focus on the negatives. I focus on the realities. You go to some other countries and you look at Britain and what's gone on to Britain with its immigration attitude where it's sort of it's all come all in. Yep. We in Australia, we've got something pretty special. We know that. There is a perception in the community, and, and, and no politician ever wants to seem to seemingly address this, that we are inviting the wrong kind of people to Australia. Now, you know, you can say that's coded language, but you know exactly what I mean. You would hear it from your constituents as well, that we're inviting the wrong mix of people to Australia, and too often, not with respect to the nation, but with respect to the people who are showing up here wanting to be settled. Well, I don't think that's right, Jason, and, and uh, the mix has changed a bit over the years, but uh, still the largest groups uh, are British, people of British uh, background. Uh, we've uh, had an increase in South Africans, quite a large increase in Indians, uh, Indian people over the recent years. But uh, the, So the mix does change. It's partly driven by bringing in skills in, into the workforce, but uh, we've had a fairly stable... Uh, um, set of contributing countries in many ways and uh, as I say we've done it pretty well the first arrivals always do it a bit tougher we were pretty hard on the Italians and the Greeks in the 16th and 70s we used some pretty unfortunate names about those people then uh, now we you know we wouldn't think about calling an Italian some of the names we did those days uh, and uh, we think of you know, they're all playing Aussie rules football and, and running successful businesses and being doctors and lawyers. And so it's partly it just takes a bit of a while for each, each group to settle in, if you like. Uh, but when the track record says that we invite people from European nations, and you mentioned Italians and Greeks and uh, people of Jewish descent and others, you invite them to this country and they're fitted in so quickly. We have groups of people that live in enclaves in my city and in cities all around Australia that seemingly are not being encouraged, and it's not, maybe not by their, by their decision, but not being encouraged, as was the case with the Greeks and the Italians and the others you mentioned, to assimilate, to fit in, to become Australian and to become it, not to bring the culture that you had, that you left, that for whatever reasons you abandoned, to move into Australia and just keep it going just on a smaller scale. There is a sense that government is not prepared to confront that. Yeah, I don't think that's right, Jason. I'm always prepared to confront these issues. Um, I think, I mean, sometimes we look rosily back at how easy it was for particular groups coming in. Uh, so they did it tough at the start. They tended to all live in the same suburbs at the start. You can go you know, anywhere in Melbourne and Sydney and you still have you know, areas where there's a lot of Italian or Greek influence or English influence. Uh, so I don't, think, I don't think sometimes people are, are, are balanced about that, but there's no doubt that where people settle and how they settle is important. One of the things we've got to address is I think people go often to where the cheapest housing is when they first arrive, and we've seen a lot of settlement of groups in the same areas, and I think we can do better at that. We're seeing more people settle in regional Australia. One of the great things that's happened, actually, is regional Australia is so short of people. They've been really encouraging of new arrivals, and we're seeing all sorts of quite positive things going on there. Yeah, but I'll accept that, and you may have the statistics to back that up, but anecdotally, you go to pockets of Sydney, to the big cities, to Melbourne as well, you wander along, and you know, and I do. I mean, developers, for example, they want to put up a new building. They have to go through forests of red tape to get permits, environmental impact studies, but government bring in people from all over the world and seemingly just say there, bingo, in the community, go for your life. There, there, there is no it seems um, there's, there's no care taken afterwards to make sure we're getting people into an environment where they will fit into mainstream Australia. In other words we seem to be comfortable with saying it's alright if this is the area of people of this particular background, Middle Eastern communities, this is the Asian area, this is this. And you come to Sydney and other big cities, you know it well, don't you? Yeah, I think that's true of most big cities around the world, uh, Jason, but I dispute the fact we don't do a lot of work with people after they arrive. We do, and that's partly what my department do does. Do we succeed, though? The social cohesion in Australia has been good. We've accepted bits of everyone's culture. We, we value that now, uh, but we encourage people to not only you know, keep faith with their culture, but to become Australian. And what Australia is is, is different now to what it was in 1949. Yeah, no, we, sure, we were, but we all, but that doesn't all... mean what we did in 1949 was wrong. No, no, but we're just I'm just saying we've changed. The fact is we've taken the best bits, if you like, from all the cultures that have come here. Right. And, uh, and I think it's one of our strengths. But I do accept the point about settlement. I think we do have to ensure people are, are settled uh, more broadly and are, are allowed to move in the community much, much more quickly. Well, we don't tolerate happens. enclaves, and we shouldn't. Uh, thank you for your time this morning, Minister. My pleasure,